is especially um, uh, crucial to me or critical. It's right before my birthday. We went through this last year. And it's what, it's what the Rosh Hashanah used to call your critical cycle. So I have to be, I have to know that things are going to happen that's not going to be right, and I don't need to go off or crazy and stuff like that. I have to be very, very calm. Something happens, I just take it in, you know. And not my usual stuff. I got to take some breaths, you know. If I'm writing something, I got to write it, then leave it alone and come back and so you know, plan it out. So that's what I've been doing. And I've been having a really good time writing. And plus, this is the time when I'm just going to go into my shell, I'll finish up and do my little, you know, working on my thesis and stuff like that, so I can leave people alone. Because if I put people, then that will set me off and I go crazy, crazy, crazy. Now you say, well, why are you talking about all this stuff? Well, I mean, we may have talked about this before, but, you know, you have to realize, well, you have to, of course, you realize this is your place, it's your place, but you grew up here. Alice is basically like, uh, like, um, the suburbs of the states, you know, and in the suburbs, well, not the state suburbs, but in a village or in a town, there's really nothing to do. So what you do is you end up, you know, gossiping and you end up doing little petty things and all that sort of stuff. No, no, no. Okay, we, we, we went over that before. But the problem with all that stuff is people have these long relationships. They have these long animosities. So if you actually do something wrong, it stays for years. You might even, this is where those family feuds come in, you know, all the rest of that stuff. Because you might, you might have did something to somebody in grade school. <laughs> and, you know, you're still, you're still reeling about that grade school thing, you know, you just don't forgive and forget that. So it's a particularly strange kind of, kind of situation to be in. Now, a big city person like I am, you know, like that, you know, when something like that happens, you just go, go to the next circle, you just, just brush it off. But here, you can't be running around. You know, the person that you, say for instance, you, you, you mess with somebody's whatever woman or something like that, it might be the judge's sister or something like that. Then you got to go to court and all of a sudden the judge is, oh, oh, oh mess with my sister. He's not saying that, but the place is, you see what I'm saying? Or, you know, the police or whatever, the, the, the authorities or anything, you know, it could be anything. So it's not a really good situation to be in. But you have to persevere. And guess what? I know this because my sister lives in Virginia. It's like this, what they call Southern hospitality, right? So when somebody first comes in, everybody's nice to them, you know, trying to make friends, you know, and all this that stuff. But after a while, when things happen, or if you don't get what you want out of that person, then you start turning around. Let me tell you one little situation, then I'll leave you with this. You know, I, I go to uh, H Solutions all the time. Colin is a friend, kind of runs the business there. You know, I just drop by with the boys, and I, I just shoot the breeze with them, you know, do my regular American thing and then leave. But there's this guy that sometimes speaks up. He's, well, he's, a, he's one of those town drunks, you know. You know, he wants to be my friend. You know? And I just, you know, just keep on going, courteous, and I just brush him off, whatever have you. And now we start to complain to Colin that, you know, I don't like him. I don't blah, 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 blah. Because I don't engage with him. Well, the thing is, I know why he wants me to engage with him. Because he's a town drunk. He don't want to be my friend. <laughs> He want to make friends with the money he thinks I got. You see? And so it's like hilarious because, especially since I've been around the place. I mean, I've been a lot of places. So you can feel, you can tell when somebody's coming to you genuinely or not. Especially when you, that's the thing about being older. You know, you can, they, uh, let me say it this way. There are certain profiles, tribes, uh, archetypes, as they say, those kind of things. Hey, archetypes, one of those big academic words, <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> so you see that coming, but you've seen that, you've already seen that five or six times. It's funny, when the, when the seventh one comes, or the eighth one comes, or the ninth one comes, you, you recognize it right away. And so you, you know what to do, you know. Since I, I shouldn't say this, but since I'm coming to my birthday, I, know, I said I said I'm going to stop already, right, but let me just give one thing. When I was traveling, when I was a lot younger, I had my locks, I was looking real good, you know, most, uh, you know, you always, you know, because, you know, you always run into women, you know. So I was talking to this woman, you know, this, I forgot where she's from, you know, some country. And uh, she says, no, I know what you're like. I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't want to get, my, I said, well, baby, I'm just, you know, uh, <laughs> sweet talking. Her. But she's also about this. It's the same thing, you see. So I'm just saying that you know what's coming. You know where you are, you be aware of where you are, and it's the same for any place. And you, just, you actually, the only thing to protect you is you have to be more of yourself than anything. In other words, it's weird, you have to, you have to actually become 
dig deeper into yourself and become, bring that strength of yourself to deal with this stuff. And otherwise, it really doesn't work. Anyway, this is one of those things that's been on my mind in my crucial period <laughs> before my birthday. Things happen. Anyway, through, anyway, this one of those dispatches from the arts director of Mary said that would be me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you, you, you know what I only suspect. <laughs> <laughs>